Good afternoon, Husky Pups. Here is Miss Batone with your ELA lesson for the day. As you know from yesterday, Mrs. Faulkner and I are going to read the BFG with you. And she started the book yesterday, so I'm going to read a little bit with you today. One of the things that I always want you to remember that with a book like this, we hit so many ELA standards. So just to remind you, RL 3.1, I can ask and answer questions. We're going to answer questions about the BFG. Everyone has their packet. So if you have your packet, make sure you have it out and ready every time you watch the video. RL 3.3, I can describe the characters in the story and their actions. We're going to describe Sophie. We're going to describe the BFG. RL 3.4, I can determine the meaning of words and phrases as they are used in a text. Each time I'm going to go over some of the vocabulary words that are in each chapter. RL 3.5, I can refer to parts of the story such as chapters to describe how parts build on earlier selections. So each day, Mrs. Faulkner and I are gonna try to read two chapters. Okay, and we'll refer to specific chapters. And then as you look in your packet, they're divided up by chapters. RL 3.9, I can compare and contrast the theme settings and plots of stories written by the same author about the same or similar characters. Miss Stuff is also reading you a book, James and the Giant Peach. So think about how they're similar and different. And then our last standard, RL 3.10, I can read and comprehend third grade literature. And that's a key final standard that we're going to do to finish up the year. So before we start the chapter, we need to go over the vocabulary words so that when you hear them as I read, you're going to understand. So for chapter three, there's two main vocabulary words, imprisoned, kept in prison or captive. I got a little guy there that's imprisoned seized take hold of something suddenly so as you can tell it looks like a brother and sister and she's trying to seize the book away now i'm going to go to the packet that you have so i'm going to go up and here is chapter three now i know miss batone's students know this so now all of third grade is going to know this sometimes before we would read a chapter we would read the questions first, so then we knew what to listen for as we read the chapter together. So here are the questions for chapter three. Using evidence from the text, describe how Sophie felt when she was snatched by the giant. When the giant had got Sophie outside, he arranged the blanket so that he could grasp all the four corners of it at once in one of his huge hands, while Sophie imprisoned inside, with Sophie imprisoned inside. And right there is imprisoned, our vocab word. Using context clues, what does the word imprison mean? And then our final question for chapter three, where do you think the giant is taking Sophie? Okay, so you should have this packet right in front of you as I start to read. Okay, third grade, I have the BFG here, and I am going to start with chapter three. Remember the vocab words and remember the questions. They're right in front of you. The snatch. Under the blanket, Sophie waited. After a minute or so, she lifted a corner of the blanket and peeped out. For the second time that night, her blood froze to ice and she wanted to scream, but no sound came out. Little figurative language there, third grade. There at the window with the curtains pushed aside was the enormous long pale wrinkly face of the giant person staring in. The flashing black eyes were fixed on Sophie's bed. The next moment a huge hand with pale fingers came snaking in through the window. This was followed by an arm, an arm as thick as a tree trunk. Good simile there. And the arm, the hand, the fingers were reaching out across the room towards Sophie's bed. This giant person was going to snatch, seize Sophie. This time, Sophie really did scream, but only for a second, because very quickly, the huge hand clamped down over her blanket, and the scream was smothered by the bedclothes. 
Sophie crouching underneath the blanket felt strong fingers grasping a hold of her. And then she was lifted up from her bed, blanket at all, and whisked out of the window. If you can think of anything more terrifying than that happening to you in the middle of the night, then let's hear about it. Anybody? The awful thing was that Sophie knew exactly what was going on, although she couldn't see it happening. She knew that a monster or giant with an enormous long pale wrinkly face and dangerous eyes had plucked her from her bed in the middle of the witching hour and was now carrying her out through the window smothered in a blanket. What actually happened next was this. When the giant had got Sophie outside, he arranged the blanket so that he could grasp all the four corners of it once in his huge hands, while Sophie imprisoned inside. In the other hand, he seized other vocab word, the suitcase and the long trumpet thing, and off he ran. So what they just talked about was one of your questions. Take a look, remember? Sophie, by squirming around inside the blanket, managed to push the top of her head out through a little gate just below the giant's hand. She stared around her. She saw the village houses rushing by on both sides. The giant was spurting down the high street. He was running so fast his black coat was streaming out behind him like the wings of a bird. Each stride he took was as long as a tennis court. Great figurative language in this book already, third grade. Out of the village he ran, and soon they were racing across the moonlit fields. The hedges dividing the fields were no problem to the giant. He simply strode over them. A wide river appeared in his path. He crossed it in one flying stride, because he's a giant. He can leap from place to place very easily. Sophie crouched in the blanket, peering out. She was being bumped against the giant's leg like a sack of potatoes. Over the fields and hedges and rivers they went, and after a while, a frightening thought came into Sophie's head. The giant is running fast, she told herself, because he is hungry and he wants to get home as quickly as possible. And then he'll have me breakfast. So that's chapter three. So one thing that we can say right away, boys and girls, is that Sophie was seized by the giant. And now she's ask, asking herself, is she going to be his breakfast? What do you think? So now you have those three questions, all right, right here. See, I have them. These are going to be right in front of you, okay? If you wanna pause right now to answer the questions, you can, because I'm gonna read chapter four also in this video. So decide that now. If you're ready to move on to see what happens, let's go. So now I'm going to go back to our PowerPoint. And in the power, actually we'll go to here first. Let's look now at chapter four's questions. What did Sophie see inside the secret cave? Draw what you think the inside of the cave looks like. Using evidence from the text, which you know, I know you've heard that a lot this year, describe what the giant looks like. Be very descriptive here. At the end of the chapter, the giant shouted, what has us got here? What do you think will happen next? So read those over again inside your head so that you know what to look for as I read chapter four. Now, there's only one vocabulary word from chapter four, craggy, many steep and rugged cliffs. So as we go to the cave, think about all of the caves, all of the mountains, all of the hills, all of the cliffs that we see. Are we ready for chapter four? All right, the cave, ooh, this cave. The giant ran on and on. But now a curious change took place in his way of running. He seemed suddenly to go into higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was traveling at such a speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung Sophie's cheeks and made her eyes water. It whipped her head back and whistled in her ears. 
she could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation. They were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over land or sea. This giant had some sort of magic in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. So very windy because he's just running super fast. Was it really possible that they were crossing oceans? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched into the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel the giant's feet pounding once again over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in a country of thick forest and rushing rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was now running more normally, although normal was a silly word to use to describe a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through a great forest, then down into a valley and over a range of hills as bare as concrete. And soon he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. So now she feels like, like she's in a different world. The ground was flat and pale and yellow. Great lumps of blue rock were scattered around and dead trees were everywhere like skeletons. The moon had long since disappeared and now the dawn was breaking. So they've been traveling through the night and now morning is approaching. Sophie still peering out of the blanket saw suddenly ahead of her a great craggy mountain. So there's that vocabulary word that talks about these high cliffs and mountains, steep ones. The mountain was dark blue and all around it in the sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among delicate frosty white flakes of cloud and over to one side of the rim of the morning sun was coming up as red as blood. So one thing I've already noticed right away third grade is there are tons of similes. Right beneath the mountain, the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, lying against the side of the mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as it had been a football. And now where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. So it's almost like it's into the mountain and it's like he moves the rock to go inside the cave. That's what I'm guessing what's gonna happen. The hole was so large that the giant didn't even have to duck his head as he went in. He strode into the black hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand, the trumpet in the suitcase in the other. As soon, he was, as soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from the outside. I've always wanted to have like a secret cave where you would move the rock and you could go in. That would be super cool, don't you? Now that the entrance had been sealed up, there was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering. He is getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He will probably eat me raw just as I am, or perhaps he will boil me first. Remember at the end of chapter three, she thought, he, he took me because he wants to eat me. Or will he have me fried? Will he drop me like a, like a rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying pan sizzling with fat? A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous cavern with a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were jars everywhere. They were piled up in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor, there was a table 12 feet high and a chair to match. Now this next final paragraph of this chapter, they're describing the giant. So pay close attention because that's one of your questions for chapter four. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that under the cloak, he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't seem to have 
any buttons. His trousers, which is like another word for pants, were faded green and were far too short on his legs. On his bare feet, he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole at the end where his toes stuck out. Sophie crouching on the floor of the cave in her nighty gazed back at him through thick steam-rimmed glasses. She was trembling, shivering like a leaf in the wind and a finger of ice was running up and down the length of her spine. She's terrified. Ha! shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. So he's like, ha! What has we got here? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder. And that is the end of chapter four. And tomorrow, Mrs. Faulkner will read the next two chapters. So now, don't forget, third grade, you have this packet. So now, after watching this video, you can complete chapters three and then chapters four. I want to really see how you describe the giant in the inside of the cave with the jars, rows, columns everywhere. All right, third grade, I will see you in a couple of days.